I've noticed that in your gear selection too. It seems like in a in a world where everybody's going to these modeling amps, the Kempers, the Fractals, those sort of things, are you still sticking with the analog gear in the studio? One hundred percent. There's there's no Kemper on the record, and I like the Kempers. I mean, I actually, I just produced a record from a band, and we used the Kemper um, actually just really for the scratch tracks and stuff, you know, for for the direct sound. But no, yeah, it's all analog amps. I mean, oddly enough, it hasn't, for me, it really hasn't changed. You know, it's like I, you know, my left side is usually a Les Paul, you know, through my 50-watt JMP, and the right side is usually like my Tele or a Zamatus through an AC30 or my Fender Deluxe. <laughs> it's like, it, it, some things really don't change, you know, too much for me. When did that configuration come together the marshall the vox and the fender uh kind of blending well oddly enough you know when i I, i've always been a marshall jmp guy ever since i I was a kid i mean it's just you know if you see a picture of me at you know 17 years old (laughs) i played a les paul and a marshall jmp behind me um but uh i always used ac30s when i was recording somebody had one in the studio, and I always thought it was a beetle lamp. You know, I was always, oh, if you want a clean sound, use AC30. And when I was in there, I actually turned it up to find that it, man, it really had a beautiful, saturated, distortion, distorted sound, just a lot more mid range. So when I uh, joined GNR, you know, I was a, you know, Marshall Les Paul guy, just like Slash, but, you know, he had a little bit more game than me. And Sometimes on stage, you know, if we hit a G chord, I couldn't tell who was hitting what. So I switched over to Vox AC30s during the GNR years. And uh, it just really helped me separate my sound from his and, you know, on stage and, you know, in the mix out front. And so that really is what started me really, you know, doing that different side was, you know, when I was working with another guitar player like Slash in the studio, I couldn't plug in with a Les Paul and a Marshall. I sound a lot like him. So I always used an AC30, or on a lot of like the spaghetti incident, is really just a uh, a 62 Fender Deluxe on pretty much the whole record. I was going to ask about that, because I mean, when you have two people with the Marshall Les Paul, was there ever a talk about maybe we should do the Telecaster Les Paul thing like so many bands have done over the years? Was there a conscious effort to separate yourself from... His style and his on my sound. side, yeah, on my side, yes. On Slash's side, I don't think he really cared. Um, but on my side, absolutely. Like I said, for the reason I just gave you, it's like it. You know, no matter what, whether one has more gain or less, there's still that sonic frequency. That that's what it sounds like, you know. And like I said, you put an AC30 against it, even if you're playing the exact same Les Paul, it will sound different, and it will cut or not cut through. I just, I always thought that was such a cool blend, like if you just walked into a vintage guitar shop and just thought, what are the three best amps, you know? <laughs> There's like usually the Marshall. But you know, guy. it's funny, I, I spent time at, a, uh, at, at my repair guys yesterday because I had my, my old 50-watt JMP repaired, and, uh, and when I got it back, I, I, I didn't like it. I mean, it was an amp I've had my whole life, and, and I was, it was too bright. So we spent hours going through tubes and stuff, like changing out power tubes, and him showing me what a difference that that makes in the sound. And we actually had that little laugh. He goes, yeah, you know, guys bring in all these different amps and stuff. I go, there's only three amps. I go, it's either, you know, a Marshall, a Vox, or a Fender. <laughs> it's like, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the classics, and they're classics for a reason, I suppose, so... Like I said, I, look, I got no problem with modern music. Music has to move along. It has to change. If we all like the same thing, it would be boring. And I got no problem with that. I just know what I do and what I like. And, you know, hopefully after all these years, I'm, you know, you get better at, at what you do. And, you know, I'm just another choice for, you know, listeners out there. So those were the amps you used in the studios. Did you change it up at all with guitars or experiment with any new pedals or anything to add to your sonic palette? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually love putting a pedal in front of them, you know, whether it's, you know, just a little more gain or uh, sustain or, you know, like I said, just even a tonal change. And I found that, uh, like, for my live rig, I, I 
use the uh, the electro harmonics uh, soul food, you know, for like you know for a solo or if it's a song that's just a little bit more harder rock and needs a little more gain on it. But in the studio, um, I use a lot a lot of different things. Like I love that little Marshall Blues Breaker pedal. That thing works great with almost anything. Um, you know, a, a good old Green Tube Screamer works great with anything. Um, I tried the new. Seymour Duncan, that 805 pedal is really, really nice. I, I had a lot of fun uh, working with that thing. And um, what else did I try? Oh, I used the new Solo Dallas pedal. Oh, yeah. yeah. The... That thing was great. I actually ended up using that a lot, especially when I was using my Marshalls. Um, it's uh, it's kind of odd. It, it's kind of hard to describe what it does, but it like to me it just adds a little more bass harmonic to it and i'm also a guy that did on my marshall my my bass is on four it's not on 10 like everybody else but it adds this like harmonic to the low end that um is really nice and especially in recording it you know where all you're do, doing is shelving bass you know when you're recording yeah that's the schaefer replica pedal right is that the one yes exactly yeah 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 exactly schaefer Re replica exactly yeah it's a fantastic pedal it, like said, especially for marshalls it's, it's beautiful do you play through a wireless? Because I, if I'm, if my memory's correct, the Schaefer replica is supposed to replicate the old wireless unit they used. Or I could be wrong on that. It's, that's exactly it. Yeah, like uh, a lot back in the early wireless days, and even before like '80s, um, that's all they had was a Schaefer. But it had like a gain stage to it to make up for signal loss, and that's what that was. And you know. Uh, Angus Young got so used to it that he actually recorded with his wireless, <laughs> which is an odd thing, you know. But and that's what the Schaefer does. And you know, I said I've I've never tried an original Schaefer wireless, but I know that you know when I tried this pedal, it, it definitely did something I like. Thanks for watching. And if you want more music news, just subscribe to Ultimate Guitar TV and press that little bell to get notifications.